Good morning. Good morning. And welcome to St. Olaf for the celebration of the 32nd Sunday in Ordinary Time. A special welcome to any visitors among us. We also welcome all who are watching this liturgy via the live stream and the television broadcast. Our presider is Father Kevin Kenny. Please continue to practice social distancing. Mask wearing is encouraged. At the sign of peace, a simple gesture or a bow is always appropriate. With respect for the celebration of the Mass, please silence all cell phones and electronic devices at this time. Please stand as we begin our liturgy. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. May the grace and peace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and communion of the Holy Spirit be with you always. And with your spirit. Good morning. Good morning. Again, we welcome all of you here, those of you joining us by live stream and our television broadcast. So we gather today. We know that Jesus walks with us. We gather to give thanks and praise to God for the blessings that we have received. We've been called this year to recognize those blessings, to account for them, and to share them with others. And so let us take a moment to see what truly is in our heart that we have to offer God today, seeking God's mercy and forgiveness for the times that we've hoarded things, times that we've held on to things that we could have let go of, for the times that we have failed to see the good in our neighbor. Lord Jesus, you came into the world calling all peoples to the peace of God's kingdom. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you come into our lives offering us forgiveness, compassion, and hope. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord Jesus, we await your return in glory when you will gather all your people. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life.
Let us pray. Almighty and merciful God, graciously keep us from all adversity, so that unhindered in mind and body alike, we may pursue in freedom of heart the things that are yours. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God, forever and ever. A reading from the book of Kings. In those days, Elijah the prophet went to Zarephath. As he arrived at the entrance of the city, a widow was gathering sticks there. He called out to her, please bring me a small cup of water to drink. She left to get it and he called out after her, please bring along a bit of bread. She answered, as the Lord your God lives, I have nothing baked. There is only a handful of flour in my jar and a little oil in my jug. Just now I was collecting a couple of sticks to go in and prepare something for myself and my son. When we have eaten it, we shall die. Elijah said to her, do not be afraid. Go and do as you propose. But first, make me a little cake and bring it to me. Then you can prepare something for yourself and your son. For the Lord, the God of Israel says, the jar of flour shall not go empty, nor the jug of oil run dry until the day when the Lord sends rain upon the earth. She left and did as Elijah had said. She was able to eat for a year, and he and her son as well. The jar of flour did not go empty, nor the jug of oil run dry, as the Lord had foretold through Elijah. The word of the Lord.
a reading from the letter to the Hebrews. Christ did not enter into a sanctuary made by hands, a copy of the true one, but heaven itself, that he might now appear before God on our behalf. Not that he might offer himself repeatedly as the high priest enters each year into the sanctuary with blood that is not his own. If that were so, he would have had to suffer repeatedly from the foundation of the world. But now, once for all, he has appeared to the end of the ages to take away sin by his sacrifice just as it is appointed that human beings die once, and after this, the judgment, so also Christ. So also Christ, offered once to take away the sins of many, will appear a second time, not to take away sin, but to bring salvation to those who eagerly await him the word of the Lord. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to St. Mark. In the course of his teaching, Jesus said to the crowds, Beware of the scribes who like to go around in long robes and accept greetings in the marketplaces, seats of honor in synagogues, and places of honor at banquets. They devour the houses of widows and as a pretext recite lengthy prayers. They will receive a very severe condemnation. He sat down opposite the treasury and observed how the crowd put money into the treasury. Many rich people put in large sums a poor widow also came and put in two small coins worth a few cents. Calling his disciples to himself, he said to them, Amen, I say to you, this poor widow put in more than all the other contributors to the treasury, for they have all contributed from their surplus wealth, but she, from her poverty, has contributed all she had, her whole livelihood. The Gospel of our Lord. Praise to you, Lord What do you have to give? As we find ourselves on this 32nd Sunday of Ordinary Time, 
We're coming to the end of this liturgical year. And our Mark and Jesus from the beginning in Mark's gospel says, the gospel of Jesus Christ, the Son of God. Have we come to truly build that relationship with Jesus as the Son of God? Have we learned over the weeks what Jesus has put to us, asking what we must do to obtain eternal life? What must I do? Which commandment is the greatest? What do I need to give up in my life? And so as we gather here in person, live stream on television, we've made it a point, hopefully, to be present because we put God first. We're renewed in placing God first in our life. So I'm sure as you planned your day today, you thought, okay, first Mass, what time do I go to Mass? And then, okay, what time are the Vikings playing? Okay, uh, what time do I have to go to the grocery store? Okay, what time? Or do we put Mass at the bottom of the list? Say, well, I've got to do this and this and this and this. Okay, should I squeeze in Mass? Should I just tune in later today on TV and watch it? What should I do? Well, if we've been challenged by the gospel this year to put the Lord our God first in our life, then every day we get up and thank God for the gift of our day. We get up to give God what it is that we have in our all and to offer that great sense of hospitality that was offered to Jesus throughout Mark's gospel. And if you remember, Jesus in Mark's gospel was always on the move. There were always people there to support him, to lift him up. And he left so many in the dust. Why? Because they were too busy looking at their phones. They were too busy, distracted elsewhere. But when we encounter Jesus today in our lives, we encounter from our hearts that Jesus is still the Jesus of 2,000 years ago who went to the cross and suffered and died so that the sins of many will be forgiven and those who eagerly await him will have salvation. So I hope that you and I are still eagerly awaiting Jesus' return, even though it was promised 2,000 years ago, and we might just throw it in the back and say, okay, he'll be back someday, but I doubt tomorrow, doubt even today. Well, who knows? But are we ready? Are we prepared for when Jesus comes back? So we've heard of the widows in today's readings. The one offering hospitality to Elijah, ready to use up her last bit of flour and oil so that she and her son would have one more meal before they died because of the famine. No resources going on. And can you imagine her thoughts when Elijah says, well, make it for me. And she was thinking, wow, that's a little selfish, isn't it? But no, her sense of hospitality of the time says, oh, I'll do it for you. And as she did it for Elijah, then her jar never emptied. And so what is it that we need to give of ourselves? The poor widow giving to the temple all that she had, her two coins, that perhaps were her last, Jesus says, giving it to the temple, to God, knowing that the temple had a ton of riches, but yet knowing that that is what God asks of us to do. Rather than keeping one for herself to be able to eat, giving the other to the temple, no, she gave both. Where everyone else gave tons of money, but it was of their surplus. It wasn't of the basics that they had. And so the challenge that has come to us this year is what is it that we have to give in order to obtain eternal life? To excitedly await the return of Jesus Christ. Are we hesitant? Are we ready to call upon Jesus in our life today? And so I told the ushers to lift weights this week, right? <laughs> because it's not just the financial giving, what we're invited to do is give up what's keeping us from building that relationship with Jesus Christ to put in the basket today perhaps a hurt or an anger you've been carrying with you for years, an unforgiveness of a sin that you haven't been able to forgive yourself for or to forgive somebody else for, 
Put that in the basket. What is it that keeps you from a relationship with Jesus Christ, putting God first in your life? Maybe it is the telephone. Maybe we'll get a lot of cells in our collection today because that's what keeps us from prayer, except if we can download that app, prayer on our phone. That's what I always hope people are doing when they're having their phones out in church. They're following the prayers, right? <laughs> what is it that keeps us from having that relationship with Jesus Christ? The poor widow gave her all. What is it that keeps us from giving our all to Jesus, to knowing of that mercy, the forgiveness, the life that we can have to be freed, to be freed to live our life as we are called to live it, to love God and to love our neighbor. And then we recognize that perhaps it is the poorest people in the world are the happiest people. I've encountered that on many mission trips where people with very, very little offer you everything they have in that great gift of hospitality the great gift of being visited, of being able to say, wow, this person came into our pueblo, this person came into our little town, this people is paying attention to us. And so for many, many years, we've developed into who we are today. And hopefully we can be happy because we've listened to what God has called forth from us We've taken seriously what Jesus did for us and the one sacrifice that forgives us of our sinfulness so that we can have life, we can give life, and we can appreciate the life in our neighbors, the life of others. And so today, what is it that you have to give? But don't worry, it's not too late. If you think of it tomorrow, if you think of it next week, give it over to Jesus. Because as we come to the end of this liturgical year, Jesus tells this story in Mark's Gospel. In the next section in Mark's Gospel, Jesus gives of himself. He gives us the ultimate sacrifice. He gives his all, his life. Why? So that you and I can have the forgiveness of our sins. That you and I can have God's grace and mercy in our life that you and I can live freely knowing that there is such a great love in Jesus Christ for us that we can be free to come forward to receive the body of Christ that nourishes us, that strengthens us, that then sends us out into the world to be missionary disciples, to bring the good news to others, and to be freed to do so, that we're not held back by fear, by embarrassment, we're not held back by earthly things, but we can be freed then to live our lives with the blessings that we have received, knowing that all that we do, we do for the glory of God that leads us to the love of neighbor. And together let us stand and proclaim that in which we do believe. I believe in one God.
encouraged by the faithfulness of the widows in today's reading. Let us turn to God to offer our prayers with confidence that they will be heard by our Heavenly Father. For the Church, that as the faithful people of God, we might all have the courage to share generously with those in need whenever we see their suffering and not just when we feel that we have enough. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the world, that all might come to see caring for the widow, the orphan, the refugee, and the poor as a collective responsibility, and that we might create this, the structures to willingly share our common resources to achieve these ends. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For those gathered here today, that we might have the faith of the widow of Zarephath, which allowed her to heed God's call without having to count the cost. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the sick, the poor, and those who mourn, that the power of Christ's death and resurrection may deliver them from their sufferings for, for the, from their sufferings for all who suffer because of illness, injury, or age, that they be not afraid, but trust in God's saving plan. We pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear our prayer. For those who have died, especially those written in our Book of Remembrance, that they may share in the heavenly banquet that leaves no need unmet. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. And together we join in praying the Archdiocesan Synod prayer. Come Holy, Holy Spirit, Spirit, make our ears to hear, make our eyes to see, make our mouths to speak, make our hearts to seek, make our hands to reach out, and touch the world with your love. Amen. Mary, Mother of the Church, pray for us.
Pray, my sisters and brothers, that this, my sacrifice and yours, may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. Look with favor, we pray, O Lord, upon the sacrificial gifts offered here, that celebrating in the mystery of the passion of your Son, we may honor it with loving devotion through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere, to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, almighty and eternal God. For in you we live and move and have our being. And while in this body, we not only experience the daily effects of your care, but even now possess the pledge of life eternal. For having received the first fruits of the Spirit, through whom you raised up Jesus from the dead, we hope for an everlasting share in the Paschal mystery. And so with all the angels we praise you as in joyful celebration we acclaim. indeed holy O Lord and all you have created rightly gives you praise for through your son our Lord Jesus Christ by the power and the working of the Holy Spirit you give life to all things and make them holy and you never cease to gather a people to yourself so that from the rising of the Sun to its setting a pure sacrifice may be offered to your name therefore O Lord we humbly implore you by the same Spirit, graciously make holy these gifts we have brought to you for consecration, that they may become the body and blood of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, at whose command we celebrate these mysteries. For on the night he was betrayed, he himself took bread, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread, gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it. For this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice. And giving you thanks, he said the blessing gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many, for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. The 
Therefore, O Lord, as we celebrate the memorial of the saving passion of your Son, his wondrous resurrection and ascension into heaven, and as we look forward to his second coming, we offer you in thanksgiving this holy and living sacrifice. Look, we pray, upon the oblation of your church and recognizing the sacrificial victim by whose death you willed to reconcile us to yourself. Grant that we who are nourished by the body and the blood of your Son and filled with his Holy Spirit may become one body, one spirit in Christ. And may he make of us an eternal offering to you so that we may obtain an inheritance with your elect, especially with the most blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with blessed Joseph, her spouse, with your blessed apostles and glorious martyrs, and with all the saints on whose constant intercession in your presence we rely for unfailing help. And may the sacrifice of our reconciliation, we pray, O Lord, advance the peace and salvation of all the world. Be pleased to confirm in faith and charity your pilgrim church on earth with your servant Francis, our Pope Bernard, our Bishop, the Order of Bishops, all the clergy, and the entire people you have gained for your own. Listen graciously to the prayers of this family, whom you have summoned before you. In your compassion, O merciful Father, gather to yourself all your children, scattered throughout the world, and to our departed brothers and sisters, and to all who were pleasing to you at their passing from this life, give kind admittance to your kingdom, there we hope to share and enjoy forever the fullness of your glory through Christ our Lord, through whom you bestow on the world all that is good. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. It is at the Savior's command, informed by divine teaching, that we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who have trespassed against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. And graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin, safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, peace I leave you, my peace I give you, Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. And may the peace of our Lord Jesus Christ be with you always. And let us offer to each other a humble sign of peace.
invite you to look at the screens for a procession to come forward to receive the body of Christ. Reminder, this side of the church, the far pews come forward first, and then the middle pews, this side of the church, the middle pews, and then the far pews. Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter into my room, but only to say the word, and my soul shall be healed. Oh, 
word, reach out in friendship, come with your hope to the Lord. Hearts now united, graced by the Spirit, come with your love to the Lord. Come,
Let us pray. Nourished by these sacred gifts, O Lord, we give you thanks and beseech your mercy, that by pouring forth of your Spirit, the grace of integrity may endure in those your heavenly power has entered, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. You all look refreshed today after setting your clocks back an hour last night. You got that extra hour, so thank you for being here, choosing to celebrate with us both in person and on our live broadcast and television network. Today after Mass, Linda Nunes will be in the Forletti Gathering Room with information about our faith formation program for children and for youth. Please stop in to register your child for First Reconciliation, First Communion, or Confirmation or simply to find out more information. And we thank you all for your generous always offerings to St. Olaf that allows us to keep our doors open, to be here in the heart of the city, and to offer the great ministries that we do in so many different fashions. Hopefully you all received the annual statement in the mail with our financial. We'll discuss that in a couple of weeks, but read it, smile, and thank yourselves. The Lord be with you. May Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Our Mass is ended. Let us go in the peace and in the love of our Lord Jesus Christ. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God.